drink my juice with some bloodshot. Alrighty. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us today. I am presenting you Fate of the Dice's Critical Role Call of the Nether Deep. I'm your DM, Rex, and today with us, I have Ikola, Nikki, Henrika, Molly, and then who am I forgetting? Duh. I forgot My screen name on. <laughs> Eventual is the name on here, but if you guys would like to introduce your characters, starting with Nikki. Um, hi everybody, I'm Nikki and I'm playing Merida, who's a sea elf by Bailwayan. Next up is Nyx. Hi, I'm uh, Nicola or Nyx. I'm playing uh, Cora Tealeaf, who is uh, a halfling um, and she's a rogue uh, with a second of a sage. Interesting. All right, Molly. Hello, my name is Molly, and I'll be playing Josie Blue, a tiefling bard who has a love of song and puns. Uh, uh, Henrika. My name is Henrika, and I'll be playing Una Shinkan, and she is a cleric with a bit of an um, unfortunate background that you will find out during the playthrough. And last, but certainly not least, <laughs> Soup. Uh, free name eventually say. Soup, but feel free to call me Sarah. Um, I am going to be playing Melody Mare. She is a water genasi circle of stars druid. I'm just going to refer to you as soup in the off hours just because that makes me hungry and I think it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, now to get into a little bit of the story before we have our adventures devil deep into the world. Here is your introduction. The answering of the call. Long ago, a war between gods of good and evil scoured the surface of the world of Exandria. Both the noble prime deities and the selfish betrayer of gods imbued their mortal champions with supernatural gifts that granted them the strength enough to challenge their divine foes. The greatest of these champions was Elixion, the Apotheon, who received the blessing of the pre the three prime deities to save the world from the apocalyptic power of the betrayer gods. Centuries later, all knowledge of the godlike hero has been lost to time, and two groups of adventurers are called upon to retrace the mythic hero's steps and free him from his timeless prison. The tale begins in lands familiar to Critical Role fans, the war-scarred waste of Exorcist and the glimmering oasis city of Ankhero, but ultimately stretches beyond the material plane to the realm of lightness, despair, known as the Nether Deep. I will apologize in the future for people watching and for my fellow players here. My pronunciations are not the greatest, but I will do the best I can. A little bit about the story overview. You guys are going to be working through the rise and the fall of Apotheon. You will be retracing this fallen hero steps, working against a party that may or may not be beneficial or not, or it could be the worst decision you've ever made. You will be answering the call, and how you go about the story purely depends on the choices you make. And of course, everyone's favorite thing, the roll of the dice. We will be starting our first chapter a fateful competition. Here, like many heroic legends that echo throughout the annals of Exandrian's history, this tale begins in peace. This tale begins in Jigawo during festival time. 
I will now be plopping you guys onto the map of Gigolo. As you guys are walking down the streets, coming from different pathways, whatever brought you to Jigawo is a story of your own. You will see many children running through the streets, laughing, streamers held up against the different buildings, different vendors laughing and selling various goods. It seems very festive, very happy. As you walk into a tavern that seems to be brimming with people and music as a light, you see various people sitting down, drinking, playing card games. You come into a time of merriment, a time of joy. There's different competitions going on. And what you hear is that this is called the Festival of Merit. It seems too good to be true. And as you're waiting in line, you meet, you come across your various party members. And you hear a call out from a man enters and he points to the five of you. You five, you have been chosen. And as such, you will be the one to dive into the waters of the Emerald Gulch in search of a prize. You five are your own party for this. There is no fighting it. I have chosen you because you look like you would be a good group together. So, time to begin your challenge. There is a prize on the line if you succeed. You have no choice. And with that, he will snap his fingers and a bunch of people will appear next to you, ushering you away to the starting line. You may now, uh, how do you react to being chosen without a choice for a trial or a prize you have no clue what you're getting yourself into? That's so laugh. Finally, he says, I have been chosen. I can wash off the shame of being captured by the dark elves. Poseidon above me, watch as I reclaim my glory so I will not get looked down by the nuns in my temple. <laughs> well, I just I... stopped for food and drink. What is going on? This seems a little bit rude. This is great. It means I get to finally find out what happened to my mentor. Um, I, I've been wanting to get to the nether deep for, for years. This is great. Well, I just walked in here. I'm happy to be involved. Nice to meet you all, by the way. Yeah, nice to meet you all too. I'm not sure if I like this pulling the hood farther down over my face. Who are you all? My name's Cora. And I am Una. My name is Josie Blue. Um, that man described diving and an emerald gulch. Do any of you happen to be good swimmers? Huh? Not great, but I'm sure we'll figure it out as we go. I thought so it sounds kind of one of my things. I said my friend walk under. Alrighty. Uh, as you guys I'm not are being at all. Ushered, <laughs> ushered to the starting line, you hear the man saying, What? What do you mean it's not ready yet? Ah you gotta be kidding me. This is supposed to be the spectacle of the year. He will turn to you and the other groups who are participating in this Emerald Grotto expenditure. It appears my colleagues here have not finished setting up the grand finale. So, it would behoove you to go enjoy the festival and get to know each other. Teamwork is important, you know, as I go and fix this. And as he's walking off, you hear a slight mutter under his breath. Somebody's not getting paid tonight. What do what he needs to fix? Anybody mm. see anything? Or... You, what you see is a bunch of goblins with spilled over material, uh, broken fireworks, and a bunch of rule pa like rules paperwork drenched on the ground. It's obvious that the setup had met some 
interesting fates. I would say. The goblins look very distressed, but they are currently trying to clean it up. Una cannot resist helping the weak. She runs up and helps the goblin. They appreciate it, and after a while, that uh, you manage to clean up the mess. But it's obvious that this Emerald Grotto expenditure is going to have to wait. There's... But that gives you the party time to get to know each other a little bit more. There's plenty of games for you to be able to play and challenges that can build you guys together. After all, this is the time of merriment. Who wouldn't want to play games and get to know the party that they were forced to join? <laughs> it may be a matter of life and death. Well, sounds delightful. Shall we have a, a, a look around and see what's happening and get to know each other as we're waiting? Absolutely. Yeah, so, when you look around, you see uh, a bunch of games currently going on. You got the best pies in the jumble. You got mazes that were constructed for you to compete in. You got uh, Iflon Plunge, which is a river game. You got Call to Arms, which you see is like arm wrestling and little jousts. You get the wet walk paddy whack going on, which is a bunch of people who are bracing the rice paddy harvest. You heard you have herding the horizon backs, which is a bunch of young tor horizon back tortoises that are currently in a jumbled mess and being released out and people have to hurdle them because they're painted different colors on the backs and you have to herd your color into your slot. And then you got a game of wits with riddles. It's up to you which one you want to play first. Anything calling to anybody? I feel I'm too little to do the arm wrestling. I don't stand a chance against those giants. Oh, I agree with you. I just get arm wrestling. All right, just so you guys have a generalized idea, you are currently here on the map, right in the center of J8 and J6. I want you to take a look and see who are the current contestants in the arm wrestling challenge. So currently you have a bunch of young soldiers currently going on wrestling. You got a few of the older, like peftier men who are laborers or barkeeps. And then you got a few of the local butchers as well as blacksmiths currently competing. I hide my warhammer and cover up my chainmail with my cleric's vestments. So I look weaker than I am. And they walk <laughs> over to the arm wrestling challenge with a soft voice, pretending I'm just a humble village girl, and ask if I can participate. Melody's going to be chuckle. right behind Una, and as she stops in front of them, she's going to put her hand on Una's shoulder and be like, I think you've got this, and give her guidance. Alrighty. I'm just going to go to the side and watch. Uh, being, a, <laughs> being quite small, I'm not going to take part in that. It wouldn't, wouldn't go well. <laughs> Alrighty. You come up there and say, yeah, it's free. Though, keep in mind, this thing can get a little nasty. He, it, the, the guy in charge of the challenge, a fairly hefty human with uh, balding sort of hair going on. Have any of you seen Matilda? Yes. Yeah. It's the father in Matilda, is what this guy vibes of. The sort of hair, like old, that sort of greasy looking. <laughs> and as you sit down at the table, your first challenger, a female drow, sort of smirks. I think I got this one in the bag. As she turns to you and sort of puts her arm up on the table, getting it ready. Let's see what you've got, Tiny. Una bows and with a polite bow, she hides 
her face while she cast thaumaturgy to make herself shine and blind the drow as she grabs onto her hand and with a warning pulls it down and try to cheat in this arm wrestling contest this way and with a surprise I will try win it before they realize it. Thaumaturgy just makes things loud. I can cause flames to flicker, right? So I make it in her eyes because this is a drow, so it distracts them. Uh, you uh, roll strength because this is a competition of strength. So you would take your strength modifier and just click. You should be able to roll a dice and have the strength modifier, or just be able to click it in your character sheet. I click strength. Roll with normal roll, submit. Can you see it? 20. Oh! You got a nat 20. You beat with a nat 20 by 2. That, even with the blinding, this was very close. But in the end, you managed to win. The drow huffs and walks off angrily, kicking dust and kicking over chairs. <laughs> well the, it's obvious you struck a soft, sore spot. And with that, your next challenger, Maggie Kimis, sits down. She's eager. And when she sits down, she is obviously wearing very fine armor. She has two soldiers standing next to her, placing their hands on their shoulder, like, Captain, are you sure you should be doing this? And she's like, no, I'm having fun. Let me do this. I want to see what this tiny one got. And she uh, has your second challenger uh, ready up. Right? That's the same thing as before. Roll a d20. Would have the same cheat? While rolling. It would not work the second time around. Oh, no. uh, as you notice that you suddenly can no longer use any sort of magical enhancements. <laughs> Even guidance? Even guidance, as you see a uh, <laughs> oh. mage standing next to the guy oh, no. sort of glare at you. Your trick has been found out. <laughs> oh dear. Una realizes her trick has been found out. She apologizes to the soldier and say, here I go, please go easy on me. And here we go, Rose Strings. As you now that you no longer have your trick, you feel utterly powerless as your hand is slammed down through the table, cracking it. You weren't even prepared for the strength that you felt in this hand, and it caught you completely off guard as you lose the challenge. Well, that was a jolly good game, though I think without your abilities, you're not as strong as you think you are. But anyways, thanks for having that. And you're ushered away from the table. Oh, I mean, and the new table is having to be placed as it is currently cracked and broken. Oh, I cast mending on the broken table because I'm a good spot. <laughs> they appreciate that, and they won't. Uh, they won't hold it against you for cheating for now. <laughs> is anybody else having a go? Did I have a go? Yep, yeah, go for it. You're able to sit down, and you have another character sit before you. It's a, a male goblin. Don't you know? Let's put this down, shall we? Is the wizard still watching us? Still watching me? Yes. He's watching the party very intently. <laughs> All right. Roll your contesting strength. Yeah, let's just say I don't think you guys would be able to do anything dastardly again. As the goblin just barely wins, it just seems like a slight struggle in the beginning. Both of you not perceiving to be that strong. And then, but eventually the goblin comes out on top. Well then, that wasn't that bad. Uh, come back next time. No problem, I extend my hand for like a sportsmanship handshake. 
He shakes your hand, and then walks away. Rather quickly. Should we have a look at something else, or is anybody else going to have a go at this uh, a feat of strength? I would love to look at some of the other options. I like the look of those mazes over there. They do seem pretty fun, don't they? It could be a good challenge to see if we can solve it. Mm. I'd be up for it. Well, let's go. Alright, so are the three of us trying it? I think go. I will go with this one too. Nice, yeah. Alright, <laughs> guess we head towards the maze. How, how, how big is the maze? All right. So, it's pretty large. Uh, I'll it kind of explain this to you. Near the entrance of the festival grounds, a maze has been constructed out of four-foot-tall walls of put wooden planks lashed together with ropes and propped up between the sandbags. You'll see various banners are hung over the openings to the maze, signifying hey, this one is the entrance and this is the exit. Passageways of the maze are about five feet wide. Off to the side, there's you see a tan feathered Aarakocra sitting on a chair, about thirty feet above the ground, giving him a vantage point where he can see the whole area. It's obvious he's watching for cheaters, and if anybody's needing help, they can send them to get them out of the maze so they're not stuck in there. You see a small crowd cheering and heckling the people inside, and near the entrance, you see an ogre in leather armor encouraging a reluctant goblin and breastplate to give the maze. It's obvious the goblin's not very happy about it, but eventually he gives way and goes in. This one is testing your memory and your navigation skills. Oh no. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have now, to do? The way, the way to win the maze is to study the maze from the outside, and then follow the only correct path to the exit. If a creature reaches a dead end, the judge, which is the Aarakocra, which find out its name is Sharp Watch, will swoop down and plop them from the maze. Oh, good grief. Now, you see Maggie Keenies, or the Maggie from the game that you were playing the whole arm wrestle with, is currently in there trying to encourage her friend Dermot to get in. Dermot is not convinced, even with Maggie's ability that, hey, you got this. I know the pathway. They're just not letting me in. And it, it's obvious that even he's not. Like, you see a lot of people trying to convince people to either go in or not. And they're like, hey, I got this. But nobody has won yet. Ooh. <laughs> Does that hurt when they're plucked from the maze? Or is it just a way of extracting them and it's all okay afterwards? Yeah, it's just a way of extracting them. They'll go, they'll gently get them out of there. Okay. Oh, I think it's worth giving it a go then. Ooh. Can we all go in together or is it one at a time? You all can go in together. It's just uh, you study the maze from the outside, and then once you study the maze from the outside, then you enter. Cool. So it... everybody who enters the maze must give me a DC intelligence check. Do I do that by just clicking? Yeah, you just click the intelligence. Okay. Has yeah. that linked across? Oh, yes. Let me see. Yep. Let me see my I got Melody, Cora, and Merida. I was going to say, it's really tall. Can anybody see over the walls? Because, uh, again... Um, they have... They, you get a platform where you get to step on, and you get to look. What you oh. do is you're being straight and see the path to the center. But yeah. then you have to memorize that path and actually execute it. Okay. So we, That's what going, right. we need to stand the game right, left, left, right, right, left. <laughs> we know which way we're going through. I thought I got Josie's roll through. Uh, so I got Josie, I got Merida, I got Cora, and I got Melody. Uh, does Una want to do theirs or no? 
wouldn't want to cheat with the team, but <laughs> you couldn't think of a good way. So well, you could still stay on the platform. Is there any way you I can communicate with us when we're in there? I actually, if I can stay on the platform, I would need two persons to coordinate with me for some way to give them left and right directions. Who's, who's the tallest in our party in there who could possibly see? Because the walls are, what, four yeah. foot high? Yeah, I'm, sh I'm a dwarf. I'm short. <laughs> I'm in As, three as I was sitting it out, I, I think the official sound should only... be and it's unwise to keep cheating. <laughs> and you want to I'm only 5'9". <laughs> oh, you'll be able to see over the walls. Okay. <laughs> And I am an excellent navigator. Ah, oh, fabulous. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> I don't mind. We can approach it either way. I think we can probably remember the path through here. And we've got a good navigator. Or if uh, if Una wants to stay, has a way of communicating. Everybody but Merida is confident that they know the pathway. Merida, on the other hand, is panicking. Not rem like the moment you look away, you're like, I don't, I don't remember where I'm going. I don't. Are we sure about this? Like. <laughs> The moment you look at you forget everything. Like I don't even know what I just saw. You just feel very overwhelmed. Very good. Fine. Just follow us. You don't need to worry. We'll remember the path. I'm yeah. just gonna sit right here on the grass. Well yeah. going. <laughs> Can we not convince you to come in with us? Yeah. Yeah, it's our first team building exercise. You, you really don't, um, not there. I will you don't need to worry. Merida. Yeah, I see Merida panicking and I couldn't help myself to encourage her, so I go with her, and I, even I know it's not allowed, I will cast guidance on her to give her some reassurance. Alrighty. The moment you guys enter the map, I need everybody entering it to make me a wisdom save. Wisdom. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, oh. Yes. I think I forgot. <laughs> hmm, main stat. I've forgotten to um, put L and R on my hands today. I'm not sure which way I'm going at it. <laughs> the moment you guys enter, full of confidence, Merida not so much. Merida's confidence is perfectly uh, warranted because the moment you get in, she runs face first into a dead end wall and plops on the ground. Sheriff Archer comes in and removes her from the maze, and Mary was not having a good day. And you got this, guys. Cora comes in, merely forgetting her lefts and her rights, yet again ends up crashing into the same exact wall that Merida did, somehow. And also is, is extracted from the maze. Uh, Josie, same thing. You, that wall, the same wall keeps getting the three of you. I don't know what it is. You guys end up hitting that wall and you very don't enticing succeed. Wall. <laughs> uh, Una and Melody do make it through the maze, however, meet each other at the end. Melody a little bit quicker. And manage, like, you, the moment you two get to the center of the maze and congratulated you win, you each get three silver pieces for that. You realize your party, the rest of your party is not here with you. And as you're escorted out of the maze, you see them all just sort of sitting at the front of the mage. <laughs> in different... Good job, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I did it good. two of us made it out. <laughs> we, we perhaps need a bit more practice. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get the hang of it. I'm sure. We can After... After you finish the maze, um, Maggie and Dermot walk up to you. Well, that was the fastest I ever seen that. It's nothing urgent, though. I have a bit of a favor. Dermot will speak up. Uh, if you find my friend Ayo, would you tell him that her Dermot's wonder wondering what the plan is after the closing ceremony? She has dark hair and blue skin. She said she was going to pee in a contest by the river, I think. If you guys could find her and tell her that for me, please, that'd be great. 
I unfortunately ran into a wall and broke my arm. And you can see, like, his arm's kind of at a weird angle. Can we just check? You want to know what the plan is for the uh, later on? Yeah, like, after the closing ceremony, we're supposed to meet up, but we don't know where. Oh, okay. Just let her know that Dermot's want, uh, will be by the healing tent. Hopefully this will be well, fixed. Yeah. The, well, the maze is very dangerous, apparently. <laughs> um, is the, the Plunge River game down by the river? If we went down to that, we could have a look for Io on the way. That you guys can. Mm -hmm. What kind of danger is do I perceive in the maze? Is it evil? Should I vanquish it? The, there's nothing in there. It's just people keep running into wooden walls. Cora looks a little embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Married of blushes. It is as easy done as it is said, so... I'm just gonna throw that out there. Also, those who completed the maze, which is just uh, Melody and Una, you guys get a little wooden metal. It's just a, it's a small piece of driftwood hung on by rough twine with a labyrinth pattern carved into it that says Metal of the Maze, showing that you've completed it. You'll see on Melody's face that she really likes this little trinket. Uh, driftwood is one of her favorite mediums to work with. Mm -hmm. Una's not sure what to do with this metal. She <laughs> thought it's red and she picked up the light and realized it's not food and she just chucks it behind her like a sneaker. <laughs> so you guys said you were going to do the river game. It's called the Ithlon Plum. Can I pick the, uh, can I quietly, stealthily pick the medal up and pocket it? Yes. You, nothing is needed for that. You managed to do it. <laughs> Alright, as you go, get ready to head towards J3, which is the, uh, so, J3 is where the F1 plunge is happening on the map, which is right over here on the river docks, down towards the bottom left. It is a swimming race that pits competitors against the surging current and the sharks of the Iflon River. As you approach, there, you see several people are gathered among the piers, arguing amongst themselves and venting their ire at a spry goblin who responds to their anger with an amused expression. Suddenly, a brash voice cuts through the chatter, and a blue-skinned woman pushes her way through the crowd and stands protectively in front of the goblin, yelling, She's not gonna say it again! If you're here with the team, only one member of your team can participate in the challenge. The rules are clear, and if you cannot handle it, get off the pier. After just a couple seconds, small groups of people began to quietly murmur among themselves. From what you know about the game is it's refereed by an impulsive, lawful, neutral goblin named Almo. As you get closer, you learn that the blue-skinned individual who interfered, his name was Ayo. The same Ayo you requested to relay the message to. After breaking up the argument on the docks, she returns to her companion, uh, an elegant drow in wizard robes. You overhear that this drow's name is Elserad, Adareth. Io and Galserad exchange a few terse words before uh, Io motions to the pier. Would anybody want to eavesdrop? Yes. Yes, please. If you want to eavesdrop, roll me a DC Wisdoms. Perception. Oh, no. Just roll Perception. Perception. If I'm mm. wearing chain mail, do I roll with disadvantage? No, if you're Perception, you're just listening in. Okay. I don't like these dice. <laughs> <laughs> Bet there's no dice jail in, in VTT. No. 
It would definitely be in there already. <laughs> there definitely should be. All right. Everybody, I think it's only one of you who got a 14 or higher succeeds. I, I think it's only the one of you. Unsuccess, yeah. you learn that the drow, Io, offered to cast a long charter spell on the general. But the drow and the elegant wizard Rhodes declined. Wanting to win on her own volition. Why did she want to help her? And was she here to us? Mm -hmm. So for you guys, say, you guys can go up and talk to them, or you can go about your day. It's up to you. Oh no, Pastor's melody. What did she say? What did she say? <laughs> well, it seems that this contender does not want any aid, and they are going to try and complete this game on their own merit. Una we might have a chance. <laughs> Very loud. I admire this person's courage. As a disciple of Poseidon, I'm obligated to give her the challenge she deserves. And she prepares <laughs> to cast Thunder Wave, not Boom. at the contestant, but at the river to create the storms and ripples in order to signify the glory of Poseidon as that person participates. Well, before we get uh, to any casting or um, challenge acceptances, should we go talk to the woman with the blue skin? Was we've I got up? a message. Yeah, we've got to we, yes. we each relay that message to her. So, yeah, yeah maybe definitely. let's have a little friendly chat before we dive right in. <laughs> <laughs> I begin walking yeah. over to Aya. <laughs> yes, me too. I'm following. <laughs> All right. As you get ready to approach them, they brush you off, saying that they need to focus on the challenge. Now, if you want to speak with them, wait until after. Io is saying that she's trying to concentrate, and so is Galthered. You are prompted to speak with them after the challenge. Can All we right. just shout? We've got a message from Dermot. And see they if she responds to that. Be, she seems to be not listening, focused in on her own okay. internal thought. I, I guess you can, can take her. <laughs> yes, who's going to be diving in? Who's going to be swimming? I think I can uh, take her. Is Ooh, it only one contestant? Again beside the riverside. Yes, you would have heard it is only one contestant from a party can play. Who's, who's, right, the best, well, who's going to be best in water? Well, if Merida wants to give it a shot as she uh, stands next to me, I'm going to be like, well, I think we both take to the water pretty well, but I definitely know that you've got an upper hand and I'm going to cast guidance on her as she goes out. A chance to redeem yourself after the whole maze, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yes, yes. Um, no one I'm trying to stop Una. <laughs> All right, so. Does, is Melody got... willing to do it? Is the water gen uh, genocide? Yeah, but it sounds like Merida, and uh, it's only one contestant, so um, I'd be glad to go second if she wants to go first. Technically, if multiple characters wanted to participate, all they need do is talk to the one in charge. But that's up oh. to you. Oh. Well, then, I would love a swim. Uh, you just need to speak to Omo, the individual in charge of this challenge. I'm going to skip over to Omo. <laughs> <laughs> At you, you as you approach. Could I help you? Yes, uh, I'm very interested in competing. Um, I don't know if you can tell by my appearance, but uh, I'm like a fish in water, so I think I've got this in the bag. <laughs> Aren't you part of that party? Pointing Who's to, to the group of friends. <laughs> Roll me a 
persuasion check. Or deception. Move me deception. All right. Ooh. <laughs> That's rough. Nah, I saw you with them. Get out of my face. And he'll wave you off. Mm. Inject the thing. Making sure that everybody in the pier knows you are not to enter the water. Ugh, you're no fun. She says loudly. <laughs> What what happened there? Was it because you were part of our group, or they just didn't like the look of you? I think it's a little bit of both. <laughs> but no, I think it's because that I'm I'm been seen with you, and now I'm I'm part of the group. <laughs> so none of us can take part. Not that I'm a great swimmer, so I wouldn't be volunteering. But okay. Um. What do we do? Do we hang around to give Io the message, or...? I think it's just one of us can. Only one of you can participate. Yeah, we were trying to see if we could get more, but... Oh, okay. Did not go as planned. I think just one should just go and try. If we, we send out our best swimmer, then... Is that going to be Merida? Everyone should be swimming yes. at once. So for this, it is a swimming contest to get a spear. Mm -hmm. Or gets a spear first and brings it back. All right, Merida, well, it's all on you. Una, a, 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 <laughs> to them and say, I apologize in advance for what I will have to do. <laughs> I was As someone this with my own accord. <laughs> As all the contestants gather up along the pier, all their toes on the edge of it, so you're all along the same line, you hear the rules. On Onmo's mark, you will plunge into the water and begin swimming. You, along the other contestants who are currently competing, are Ayo. A male orc, a female human, and a male goblin. And you, you're giving the countdown. Three, two, one. You all dive into the water. And we will be creating a turn order here. So I would need... Merida to currently roll initiative. Alrighty, you got 18 there. No, it's just Merida who needs it. Oh, but I'm Because I Your spell does not make it to the water. Oh. Well, then everyone just sees me. Praising Poseidon besides the water. <laughs> there we go. Alrighty. And with that, I need you to understand that you can only do any of your actions on your turn. Starting off first, you will be using the dash action every round. And you can only move up to about 30 feet. The distance from the pier to the spear is 75, and it does take an action to wrench that spear free. Moving first, what is your movement speed in water, Merida? Uh... It's 30 feet more. So, yep. So in your turn, you'd be able to make it 60 feet. And as you go through everybody else's turn, it would also be 60 feet. You cannot dash on your next action if you hope to get the spear. You're all neck and neck getting down into that water. Though you see the male goblin and the male orc kind of struggling in the rear. Okay. 
as Merda, you get ready to wrap your hand around the spear, I need you to make a strength check. As you see another hand also wrap around the spear. As you rip the spear free of Io's hands and dart forward another 15 feet, you see her kind of flail at the bottom of the water. You guys are all currently shifting to the front. So the part of initiative for this is to see who would be able to go first. Going first allowed Merida to get the spear. The others would try to take it from her. And uh, Merida kind of won out on the strength roll there. That, But you see a shark sort of come at you from below. You know these as reef sharks. I need you to make me a perception. You manage to see the shark and dart out of the water, but it unfortunately for the little male goblin, he is eaten. Oh. No. And you, every the rest of the party, everybody else manages to narrowly miss the shark and get on back onto the pier. I saved the goblin. Nobody can save the goblin. <laughs> Poor goblin not coming home is, tonight. Is Io still out there? Io manages to hop back on uh, shortly after Merida returns okay. the spear and is given a very similar medallion to the maze, but with a river on it. You have won the I flow plunge. Makes up for what you did in the maze. <laughs> After completing the race, Io and Galserad approach you. Io is impressed by your determination and how your strength. Glassed kind of winks at the party member who had gone up there and tried to encourage multiple people participating. <laughs> they said, then as they approach you, you she kind of gives you a crooked grin and kind of patting you on the shoulder. i never seen anyone give it their all of that before, except for myself, I mean. Well... I had an adventuring party and I'd like to introduce you to everyone after the festival's clothing ceremony at sundown. She kind of glares slightly at the party member who wanted to break the rules. I mean, some of you are more honorable than others. <laughs> Glass of a chuckle. Oh, let them be. Let them be. I would have wanted to participate too if I could. We need to give I a message. We we have a message for you from Dermot. Uh, what was that? He um he was worried that you hadn't arranged where to meet, uh, and he said he'll be in the healing tent at the end of the celebrations. He's broken ah. his arm in the maze. That does not surprise me. The damn fool. Yes, thank you. If you guys would like to meet us at the center pavilion at sundown, I'd like to introduce you to the party. It seems often? like we could have great friends. There's five of us, including myself. Oh, there are two parties. Nice to meet you, and with that, they will walk off. See you later. All the parties. All right, the remaining events for you guys to participate in. Let's see here. You completed the maze, you completed the plunge, and you completed the call to arms, meaning you have the best pies in the jumble, the wet walks paddywhack, the hurting the horizon backs, and the riddles and rhymes. You do not have to 
do with them all, but those are some of the ones that are left. I think Melody is quite interested in, in hurting, in the hurting challenge. I was just about to say the same thing. <laughs> Can we all give it a go together, or is it an individual challenge? You won't know until you walk over. Let's go and give let's it a go. Go. Let's go and have a look. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and ask what do we do in there. All right. As you head over, you're heading back to the central area, this sort of green area over by J6. This challenge is going to be testing your acrobatic skills and skills of handling animals. The rest of the goers are clustered around a paddock full of young horizon back tortoises that are shuffling around inside the enclosure. The 15 foot tall tortoises are being tended by young herders who are fitting them with makeshift bridles. These individuals are overseen by a tall, attractive orc who makes sure the bridles are attached correctly. The orc will wave at you guys as you approach and see, have you come to join the horizon back migration? There's a tortoise for each of you, and a metal to be one if you make it to the end in one piece. Last year we had to rebuild three houses after the festival. Are all of us up for it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we shall each take one of your finest... I forgot what they were already. But Tortoises. one of your finest tortoises. That's the one. Alrighty. Do we have to use the tortoise to, to herd? Or are we allowed to be off the tortoise and maybe try to herd them in another way? You, you have to ride the tortoises. Big are they? <laughs> uh, they're big enough for everybody to be on there, though for their, your dwarven friend, they may be a little too big. Wait, oh, what? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but you could. All of you will be able to ride it without any disadvantage. Uh, you see Io currently no. lounging, lounging in the back with Dermot next to her, as well as Gel said. Dermot seems to be a lot better with his arm. She gives you a thumbs up, seeing that all of you uh, accepted the challenge. And wishes you good luck. Do we think this? The paddock, Do we think it's the paddock genuine? Is mm -hmm. It is genuine. Like any sort of roll, you could roll a nat one and tell it's genuine. You can roll a nat twenty and tell it's genuine. I will let you know that. Save you from a roll. <laughs> <laughs> the paddock is maintained by her Rosenbach tortoise trainer named Adon, a lawful good orc scout. Adon is supervising the transfer of young tortoises from the paddock to the open fields on the west side of the jumble. Where the tortoises will be training to become mounts and mobile buildings for the tribes of Jigwo. There are many tortoises available and to the, they're like different sizes for the characters. Attach each of front edge of the tortoise shells as a makeshift seat big enough for a single rider. Each of you will be riding your own individual tortoise. You all are seated at the entry line, all nice and snug in your seats. Adon will climb into the back of a larger tortoise outside the paddock with a yell, do a hand signal, and begins to lead the group of tortoises out of the paddock. Your goal to win this challenge is to get the tortoise from your paddock to the training paddock in one piece. These are young tortoises that may have a mind of their own. They are not yet trained. <laughs> you must follow a dawn and maneuver it to the destination. Uh, I Melody's... need everybody to make before, if you'd like to talk before you go, go for it. And then I'll tell you what you need to do. Oh, I was going to say that Melody is going to look around and look for the uh, most beat up looking tortoise and she's just gonna go right up to it and say, you're Raphael and you and I are friends now. <laughs> Alright! You are now friends with the tortoise. His name is now Raphael. <laughs> I need everybody to roll me an animal handling check. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> Uh, okay. I have a plus five to animal handling, too. <laughs> Everybody but Melody 
succeeded on the first one. Oh. Melody, I need you to roll me a dexterity. I, I came on too strong. It's okay. <laughs> Raphael is too excited. <laughs> Alright. Oh, he no. Objects. Being called Raphael, oh, obviously. Oh, oh. You He's were more of a Mikey, well, I guess. Oh, no. <laughs> How much damage is this doing? Let's see. Oh, no. <laughs> you take six points of damage as you are chucked off the turtle. No. <laughs> you can. Tr you need to make another acrobatic. You need to make an acrobatics check to get back on. Okay. Uh, one moment. Yeah, baby. You managed, you managed to get back on without any further issues, but you are. Severely lacking behind the group. <laughs> Everybody needs to make me animal handling check again. Oh, damn. Uh. Oh, that's not too bad. We'll say I severely apologize to my tortoise for calling him the wrong name. <laughs> but did you find out your tortoise is a girl? <laughs> it's just wrapping it up. <laughs> you getting knocked off, you noticed that. I was like, oh, that's probably why. <laughs> All of you managed to succeed and hang on, though Una's barely hanging on. Your third and final animal handling check. Una noticed the poor choice is struggling to carry her weight and she gets off because she doesn't want to talk to her. <laughs> She cannot... Meredith's doing great riding her tortoise. It's like best you've ever seen. Can I can I cast guidance on my on my tortoise? No, because it's you. Okay. It's just it... Oh my god. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uno got off and forfeited, which gets a crown from uh, Ayo. Uh, Cora get, also gets topped up, tossed off as well as Melody. Or almost tossed off. I need Cora and Melody to make me a deck save. The rest of you passed. Meredith's doing great. Like, head of the pack. Tortoise is fine. Oh, no. That's not good. <laughs> No, I just need to also get, uh, I think it was Melody's, yeah, Melody's check. Oh, get yeah, uh, dexterity saving, or? No, no, you succeeded in that. I mislooked at your own one, so. Okay. Una jumped off, so it's just. No, it was Corin. Yep, I got that right. Melody, you gotta do yours as well. Uh, saving throw? Yeah, just a dex save. Oh my god. <laughs> Alrighty, uh... Then y'all need to roll me acrobatics as I roll your damage. As you each take 10 points of damage. But you get back on your tortoise. Do we need to add the damage on roll on them um, D&D yeah. Beyond? You, yeah, you take it away from your head points. You each get 10, though you took 6 earlier, so you got a total of 16 damage from this, uh... Oh, I didn't think I had any already. No, you got six the first time you fell off, Melody. No, it's Cora. Which? How many has Cora got to take oh, off? Cora, Cora only gets ten. Yes. Ten damage. Points. Melody gets six. Yeah, Cora gets ten. Melody gets sixteen. Total. Okay. That unfortunate endeavor. Dangerous challenge. So you both manage to get back on. As you reach your destination. Unfortunately, the only one who receives the medal is Merida, who managed to stay on and rolled me in that 20. Oh, you were ahead of the pack, no issues. And the medal you were given is a claw with a tortoise engraved on it. They, they, you are assured that these medals were made from tortoises that died naturally. 
tortoises are sea animals, aren't they? Yes, yes, they are. So you can, just can understand me, but I can't understand them. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> I'm just going to be like, good tortoise, and give him a little scratch underneath the chin. The tortoise is very happy with you. Uh, Melody's going to cast Cure Wounds on herself <laughs> at level one. And, uh, Fair enough. see what we get. Oh, can, well, can, no. can we have a short rest so I can roll some hit dice? Yeah, go for it. You guys can take a short rest. How do I roll my hit dice? I don't know. If you're doing it in D&D &D Beyond, you yep. should be able to go and click the short rest button and click on the hit dice. So, let's see, I get plus six. Okay. Um, roll hit die. Okay, so. What's that? So I can put eight back, is that right? Or does it automatically yeah. do that for me? Oh, yeah, it doesn't. That one, I'll check. Yeah, if it didn't, I would do it yourself. Sometimes yeah. it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's a bit finicky. Okay. Yeah, because that's back up to 28. It's not my full, but it's not far off, so that's okay. Who else needs healing? I can also heal as Una offers. Oh, well, I'm still down two hit points, so I'd be quite happy to have my last two <laughs> restored. While um, you guys are talking about that, I might take a quick one minute break. I gotta go grab something real quick. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. so, my uh, first time trying to cast Healing Word, I'm supposed to add. 1d4 plus my spellcasting ability modifier, whatever the heck it is. Una, do you have like a, a several person healing? Because I'm I'm at 11 of, of 27. Oh dear. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty bruised up. <laughs> oh, okay. I just clicked on it. I don't think I'm doing it right, am I? How do I roll a 1d4? On D and D row twenty. Uh, so I think when you go and you click your dice, um, so if you just need one D four, I think you just click the D four itself, and then if you do more than one dice, then that's what those preceding numbers are. So like if you need uh, uh, two D four three. I'm not on D and D beyond. I'm on row twenty. Yeah, I'm looking at the roll uh, twenty oh. um, dice roller. Okay. Right. I so like on, at the oh, it's, it's quick settings. Um, oh, it should be on the left hand side of your screen where you've got like your arrow, your hand, the little text painter, and at the very bottom there should be a little picture oh, of like a d twenty. Okay. Yeah. One d four. I roll a two plus my spell casting modifier, which is my wisdom, which is six. So you you got six hit points back. Who does? Me or uh, I forget who else was looking for Whoever some. Has hit eleven hit points. Yeah, I was gonna say you me. take you take them because mine are higher. Yeah. Okay. Yay! Did you use your hit dice? Mm -hmm. So I've only got a bruised eye now. <laughs> how, wait, how down are you? Seventeen of twenty-seven. Did you use well, your hit dice? Will... Yeah. So well, you used them. Uh, hmm? You already used them. Yes. Okay. Well, I can do a cure wounds if you'd like some extra healing. Uh, I think we'll be fine. For now, we'll we'll see what else we okay. trouble we get into. Okay, just let me know. All right, I'm gonna. Stand by. I'm gonna immediately take you guys find uh fight an adult elder dragon. Uh... No. <laughs> oh no. TPK. <laughs> no, not a dragon. <laughs> Dive into the water. You guys are gonna. Is, is anybody else concerned about this party we're meeting at sundown? I, I just... I'm, I'm not sure they're going to be as friendly as we think they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've seemed nice so far. 
Yeah. It's a little smidge arrogant. There's yeah, one for I mean, each of us. Wow. There is. There is. I mean, I suppose the cent- central, p- central pavilion is going to be kind of an open space. Mm. It's either going to be the start of a beautiful friendship or a lifelong rivalry. Yeah. Pokemon! <laughs> 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 when you want into it, I get to know them. All right. Except for you guys. You guys are uh, Poseidon's calling for me. I will inform you that the two remaining festivals uh, games won't hurt you. Oh, good. <laughs> you got the pie eating contest and the riddle game. Ooh, pies. Ooh. Pies. <laughs> yeah. What pie? Is so the pie eating contest. <laughs> pie eating contest is located in the baker's area over here at J1. Let's go. Let's yeah. go oh, before we go, can I take the turtle with me? I'm trying to befriend him the old match instead of riding him, and I want him as my pet. <laughs> Roll me an animal handling. Oh, I hope you get a nat 20. <laughs> I think you need to. You, there was a score for this. You were one off. Oh! You hit it. He could have slowed us down a little. They're not quick. <laughs> I but my tears off and say goodbye to my turtle, and uh, <laughs> I try to give him. As he... Yes. Have you got a lettuce leaf to leave him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just staring angrily at mine. <laughs> I didn't like you at all. Making roasting sort of signs. <laughs> you now feel that in your darkest moment, you will see a turtle laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> the real big bad of the campaign. You will turn. It's coming back at the end. <laughs> you beef the hell up. As you guys are making your way over to J1, you smell savory scents of meat, pastries, and spices. A cooking stand and a festival stage with long table are set up on the at a, at a tortoise's feet, where an orc stands over a massive oven. She bustles from the oven to the stage and back, placing delicious-looking hand pies in each seat, stacking more of them on the cooling rack nearby. People are already gathered at the stage, including a scrawny young male human, the mop of brown hair and a scruffy beard. As you approach, the orc calls out in a melodic baritone. Huh? And sample the best meat pies on this side of the waist, yes? I sell them for meals up there, but I'm running a pie eating contest down here all day. If you got an orc sized stomach, that is. Melody's gonna stroll right up and ask, What kind of meat do you have in these pies? That's the secret. No, my specialty. She's going to give him a, an, an eyebrow what? up and just look at him curiously. No, they are safe. <laughs> this is really for the eating contest. <laughs> Do you see any cats or dogs on their way into this bit? This is a tortoise-friendly place. You do know that there's a cow village outside, <laughs> like a cow farm nearby. <laughs> And surprisingly few rats. <laughs> you know that a gas silver spoon is a uh, who's a chaotic good orc, the lady orc who's serving you, moves from counter to counter, deftly slicing at a variety of cooked and spiced meats, and then folding them into pie crusts that she shoves into the oven behind her. They make your mouth water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gesture towards a raised platform next to her cooking station, where three people are already seated. Uh, one of them being a cocky male drow, flexing his muscles, pointing at people at the gathering crowd and winking. A female halfling, using uh, her good looks and a smirk on her face. And then a young male human scanning the crowd as if looking for someone. You overhear his name, Arvin Wastewalker. These contestants have been... Uh, these contestants are all waiting for it to begin. They seem to be waiting for one more person. 
Who's in the mood for Pat? You know, I feel like this is a really great opportunity for anybody who might have vicious mockery. <laughs> well, it just so happens. I mean, I'm down to try if nobody else wants to. <laughs> go, go for it. Alrighty. I stroll up, I sit down, and I get ready for pot. <laughs> Alrighty. I need you to make a constitution check. Or not. You ate your first pie with no issues. The pie is the most flavorful and delicious thing you've ever tasted. The second pie has a little difficulty. It requires you to, that's what's requiring you to roll that check. <laughs> Which, you make it. Oh, let's go. Um, and then, as I'm... You, oh, sorry, sorry. you now need to make another deck, uh, Constitution check. Um, as I'm shoveling more pie into my mouth, can I whisper to the person next to me and try and do a little vicious mockery? Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, happened, it happened to be that male drow from earlier that was being very cocky. Sounds good to me. Um, so I'll do the con check. Wee. Nice. And then vicious mockery. And I'm just going to whisper, I think I see some hair in your pot. Be careful you don't choke. And <laughs> he starts choking and fails his calm. <laughs> <laughs> One down. You now, you <laughs> succeeded your second con. You need to make your third con save. All right. As the female halfling taps out of the third con save. Is now between you and Irvin. Mr. Wastewalker. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. As you fail, leaving him to succeed in the pie eating contest, you're given a consolation cookie and sent on your way. <laughs> I hand it off to someone else. Oh, yes, I'll have the cookie. <laughs> there you yes. go. Arvin. <laughs> uh, before I leave, can I look at Arvin? And I'm just going to say, that, that was for you, buddy. You're welcome. <laughs> and walk on. He smiles and thanks you. Uh, he's very friendly towards you. And he wishes you luck on any future endeavors. Go right back at you. He does say that he hopes to see you at the festival's closing ceremony at sunset. And he walks away into joy and Io um, and the he's, others. He's one of them. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure we will. You will not be able to compete in this contest again until a long rest. You're a little too, uh, full. That is fine by me. They were delicious, though. You guys should try. So is the cookie. <laughs> well, you know, I am <laughs> feeling pretty hungry. Uh, I feel like we could all use a round of drinks and maybe, you know, maybe not everybody gets pie, but I, I, I'm i sure still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You guys managed to go nearby to a seating area and managed to get some drink. Luckily, everything's on the house since it is a festival, unless you went specifically to the market area. But you managed to get a round of drinks and food for everybody, except the one who's currently bursting at the brim. <laughs> I'm just sitting. I'm going to strum my lyre and try not to throw up. You're enjoying the lulls of music, the happy merits. You see kids playing around. It's just overall, it seems like a, such a joyous time for the town of Jigwo. And that leaves it. You only have one competition left. Are we ready for Riddle? Oh, I think we can have a go. Everybody can participate in this one. Can we do it as a team? You can. Mm-hmm. This actually is a team challenge. What it is is one person will speak for you, but you all get to kind of chime in on what you think the answer is. No googling it. We have to do rows. We have to actually answer things. Oh, I love riddles. They're not that bad. I'm sure there'll be some rule checks. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> As you get ready to head over there, you see an elderly goblin in blue robes is presiding over a set of three tables. 
One table holds a wooden box. The second displays a glittering star map of the Exandrian sky. And the third one rests a row of colored bottles. A banner hanging over the setup reads, Touch your wit with me against these riddles three. Elder Kolbu Kaz, a chaotic neutral goblin priest, created these three puzzles. Each attempt to answer one riddle costs two silver pieces after your first attempt. So you guys will have to pay to try again. Okay. Answering the last two riddles correctly enough, uh, well, answering at least two riddles correctly enough, will win you the contest. There are various other challengers currently trying to solve these riddles, including Galserad that you saw earlier. He's clever and currently has two of the riddles done after a total of four guesses. Ooh. As he finishes, you guys are your party is beckoned to step up and try. So we get a, a free go at each one. Yeah, you get a free go at each one. If you fail, you now have to spend money. Yeah. Nice. The Great. first one you were presented with is the box. On this table is a locked wooden box and four metal keys. On a placard beside the box is written the following riddle, in common, of course, so everybody can be able to read it. The riddle reads as thus. Bronze, copper, silver, gold. Ancient ones from tales of old. Match the key to the box's lock. A mistake choice begets a shock. I will paste it in the chat for you. Only one of those is an alloy. I don't know whether that makes a difference. The other three are elements. Does can we do can we see anything on the box? Does it have any markings? That it's just the box and then you on the table of course has the four metal keys. You're allowed to pick up and touch everything. What do the keys what look like? Just made out of? Inspecting the keys, you can tell each one is a different metal. One bronze, um, one copper, one silver, and one gold. Hence the bronze, copper, silver, gold part of the riddle. Mm. Does the lock look like it matches any one of those alloys, or, or well, the one alloy and the other elements? Looking closely, especially at the box and the keys, you can reveal that it all the locks are shaped like a dragon with fluted crest, and the edge of the box are decorated with engravings of pearls and shells. The lock shape and the seed theme decoration are clues that suggest a bronze dragon, and thus your following goes on from there. That is the only thing you're given. Open to see what's inside. I need everybody to make me an intelligence check. Oh no. Choose intelligence. What gets that? Uh, Merida's not that smart. <laughs> Everybody but Merida succeeds. And you can tell it's talking about dragons. Bronze dragon, mm -hmm. copper dragon, silver dragon, gold dragon. To Merida, it, it's stumping you. You have no clue what's going on. What's a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> So the missing one is brass, isn't it? Of the different types. We've got we've got gold, silver, copper, and bronze. Mm -hmm. Brass is a mixture of is it tin and copper? The, or is that bronze? I can't remember. I can't remember lock. my alloys. <laughs> the lock is shaped like a dragon with a fluted crest. Does anybody know what the dragons look like? No, it's only one lock, and it's a dragon crest. One of those keys unlocks that lock. I want to try the bronze, but I don't think I can justify it, other than the fact that the other three are elements and that one's not. Um, do I know anything about the history of dragons or what they look like, or if any of them have roll me, a, roll me a history check. All right. Oh. Can I do can I do the same? You should. Only two of you can do it. So two go. I'll only allow right. two rolls. I've got a plus five modifier on history, but I'm not rolling well, so I can, but I don't mind if somebody else wants to take it. I've already wasted one of them. So. 
Please, someone. Yes. I'm I'm happy to do it, but as I say, I've got a plus five modifier, so it it, it there's a good chance. I would go ahead. Go for it. I guess you, you do it. Guidance. I'm going to give you guidance and say you look really smart. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen with with the modifier. All right. So you know the shape of the dragon lock, like it's and the aquatic decorations, it's indicative of a bronze dragon. Meaning we have our key. Mm -hmm. We tried the bronze key. I think so. It unlocks the box, and you succeed on the first riddle. Yay! Woo. Eighteen. All right, you move on to the second one, which is the star map riddle. The star map resting on the table depicts the moons and the constellation visible in the Exandrian night sky. Accompanied by the following riddle, accompanied by the box is the following riddle. And of course, all these things are uncommon. Two birds sit in a speckled field, one silver and calm, one scarlet, scarlet with woe. Night all year, the red one yields. The silver illusion, mischief, and sheltering glow. I yet again will post this in the chat so you can be able to read it. Which chat are you putting it in? I had the I put it in roll twenty. Cool, oh, thank you. Is the red one the sun and the silver the moon? Is that what it's supposed to be? Yeah, you have to identify the birds and, and then point them out on the star map. Oh gosh, can uh, um, what is the is star you... map showing us? Can you what can we see? So looking at this, it. It's depicting the moons and constellations visible in the Alexandrian night sky. Remember anything? I should have paid attention in history class. <laughs> I know. Uh, you guys, I with... will allow two people to roll an intelligence of either history or religion. Uh, I think that Melody's going to jump on this because she feels that special connection to stars in general. What's your um, modifier? Uh, intelligence is a two modifier, and what was the other one? History. History. I've got a uh, plus five on history. Same for both. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, I've got a plus five on history. Okay, I've only got a plus two, so if you want, uh, well, two people can do it, right? So I would say both you and I. Okay. Right, go happy. for it. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> Clara knows nothing. No. <laughs> he really wasn't paying attention that day. <laughs> Melody luckily was paying attention to her uh, her history classes. And you recall a stories regarding Xandria's moods. Recognizing the second line and the oh. thing, one silver and calm, one scarlet with woe. It's referring to the superstitions surrounding Rudius and the last divine portfolio of Sahin, the Moonweaver, leading you to know that the answer is the twin moons of Exandria, Katha and Rudius, as your answer. I'm going to relay all this to my team. And the that is <laughs> You paid attention in history. <laughs> Hooray. Hooray. Is that it then? And now for you. You were given the third and final one because there's a just just prove that you're better than everybody else. Okay, of course. <laughs> this is called the bottles riddle. On this table is a row of seven small bottles filled with colored liquid. Following riddle is written in common, of course. Two of us are brewed from blood and always sat to purple's right. Three are juice, one burns like flame. 
and no two colors taste the same. Even flasks hold not the pain, and shade of sky will leave a stain. Though tasty are those at each end, neither is the winner's friend. Puzzle for the keen and wise, drink the light to claim your prize. I will post that in the chat for you. The bottles are numbered from left to right and have the following. The first bottle is purple and filled with a berry juice. The second bottle is green and filled with a with a specific sort of brew. The bottle three, the, the third bottle, is a sky blue bottle filled with berry. But the last few, you do bottles four, five, six, and seven, you do not know what they are. One, two, and three are already listed as being safe. They gave that to you. But four, five, six, seven, you don't know what's in these contents and you don't know if they're ordered correctly. You only get two guesses. You have to find the bottle. That is safe to drink. Do any of the bottles look lighter in color than the others? No. Okay. You're looking for a magical liquid bottle. Which one is safe to drink, but is magical in nature? Okay, so it says even flasks hold naught but pain, so it's probably not two, four, six. Okay, yeah. Then any does anybody have identified? Well, three or detect six. magic. It <laughs> says I almost have identified. <laughs> a shade of sky will leave a stain. Three is sky mm -hmm. blue. Mm. Probably not. Uh, well, yeah, you wouldn't. Uh... Um, so, you know, bad. yeah, it does. <laughs> um, drink the light to claim your prize. Even flasks hold naught but pain, and no two colours taste the same. Three are juices, one burns like flame. So I'm assuming the brood from blight is a bad thing? Yes. Yes. Blight is a spell um, that does a lot of damage. <laughs> and they're always sat on purple's right. So would we not be best just going for bottle one, the purple one? Because there's nothing bad said about that. True. There's nothing bad said about five or seven that I can see, though. Well, no, it's, I mean, we've taken out the even ones, and we've taken mm. out the sky blue ones, and then it says two of us are brewed from blight and always sat to purple's right. Now, I suppose mm. that could be any of those we've already crossed out. It could have been one of the even ones, but the fact there's two mm. left yeah. after we've eliminated the others it leads me to the idea that it might be purple, but I could be completely wrong. No, it could be, it could be. Burns like flame. Keep that last line in mind. Drink the light to claim your prize. Is one of them... Are we allowed to touch them and pick them up and see how heavy they feel? You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to smell them. It's just the moment you drink one that takes away one of your guesses. Okay. Well, should we... Should we? Can I go down the line and lift them and see whether one of them is significantly lighter than any of the others? They feel all the same. They all feel same. Okay. What are the um, colours of the last ones? Green, red, purple. What's oh, so that? Okay. Five is purple, six is green, seven is red. Okay. Are the contents safe to drink? Ooh, I don't know. It says even flask hold <laughs> not but pain. Mm. Can we just so go through I feel those? like anything with an even number is going to be bad, bad news. Can I just mm -hmm. check those colours of four, five, and six? Hmm. 
Four is no, white, no. five is purple, six is green, seven no. is red. That means oh, okay. seven is also bad because it's also sitting to purple's right. So the blight could be two and seven. Why, why two and seven? Because it says two of us are brewed from blight and always sat to purple's right. Oh. And purple is one and six. And there's a green one next to purple on its right, two, and a red one next to purple on its right. Isn't five purple? Oh. Five is purple. Oh, oops, I thought six is purple. Six is green. Yeah, yeah so seven, seven, six and seven might be bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so six would be bad. Seven is red, which could burn like flame. So mm. maybe it is one. Can we go along them and can I go along them and sniff them and see what they smell like? They all smell like bottles of liquid. Right. So we've no idea from that. Okay. I'm going to leave it to chance, but before that, I try to cast Detect Poison and Disease and see which one is. None like of them blow. Oh, mm -hmm. so I grab a random one and try my luck. Um, well, and remember, it could be one or five. Right, I don't have it. I don't have it. I just mm, passed it. I have a similar ability to yeah. detect magic. Yeah. As if we know the one, is it, do you say the, the right one is magical? Does anybody have detect magic? I have magic oh, awareness yeah. that can send concentration. Concentrated presence of magic. Do you use that ability? Am I allowed to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll use it. Five is glowing. Ooh. Can I drink five? You drink five and you start emitting a faint glow. You congratulate it as you won the riddle. Five content is a Filled with a liquid known as Gigolo, a glow potion. Character who drinks from this bottle will feel warmth settle in their stomach as their skin emits a dim silvery glow up to the range of five feet for one minute. You won. The first bottle was berry juice. The second bottle was poison. The third bottle was berry juice. The fourth bottle was poison. Five was the winning bottle. Six was poison. Seven was apple juice. Five. Nice. While the ju berry juice, apple juice is tasty, you wouldn't have won. Congrats. First try, you all, you succeeded in all three riddles. Gladius, <laughs> or, uh, I think that was her name. Let me go up and double check. Uh, Galsared comes up to you, pats you on the shoulder, and says, I've never seen somebody do that the first try. But, her, uh, but your cunning is cut above that of everyone else in this backwater. Do you plan on participating in the grand finale at sundown? It'd be interesting to test my wits against you. And with that, he'll smile and walk away. <laughs> you, your party is given the Medal of Wit, which is uh, sculpted and painted to look like the head of a hawk. Well, at least we're good at that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad none of us ended up poisoned. <laughs> yeah, that would have not been fun. <laughs> I thought the last two weren't hazardous to us in any way. <laughs> they might have been. <laughs> right, is there any more games, or have we done all of them? That's You've all. done all of them. Now that you now that you finished the games, the sun begins to set and the sound of rhythmic drumming echoes through the jumble, summoning the participants J6 area. As you all begin to walk over there, you see the elder Urushu, a neutral orc priest. He's standing in the middle of a road atop a platform of wooden crates. And all the festival officials and a large throng of revealers are assembled. The drums die down and the elder speaks. Mighty warriors, brilliant strategists, you've impressed us with your feats of strength and instinctive wit. 
and your sturdy bellies, he booms proudly. But the main event, as you know it, is yet to come. Only two teams will be chosen to compete in the final challenge. I race through the Elmo Grotto, and the depths of which the greatest prize awaits. And he casts his hands over to you, and then you see the other group that was chosen was the party members you saw earlier. Oh, Both, groups are invited. Both groups are invited to follow the em the elders to the Emerald Grove to complete compete in the grand finale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you meet the, the rival party headed by Io gives you a thumbs up and wishes you luck. You have met that <laughs> sun. And I will now be ending it here today. But we will be continuing and picking up in the Emerald Grotto. Will you be rivals or will you be friends? Who knows? <laughs> I thank you guys for joining me for today's call of the Nether Deep. I have been your DM Rex. And I hope you guys enjoyed and hope to see you again in two weeks from now for part two. It's been great then. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you, Rex. Bye, everybody. Bye. I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great night. You too. Have a great evening. And thank you so much, Rex, and thank you, everyone, for joining. Yes, I'm looking forward to